let's focus on this six to prepare the mid tone of your skin tone, the mid tone of your uh, of your uh, face. But of course, you will need white to make a little a little bit uh, lighter, of course. But also other kind of colors already um, produced by Intense. And uh, I'm used to have this as a base and other colors, for example, Swamp Green, for example, uh, um, Periwinkle, okay, and other different colors, or for example, Bull's Blood, it's really good. And I use all these together with other colors, but the other colors I will use only for overlayering. So just to change a bit the tone of the premix mid-tone. In this way, you will have the same mid-tone, but just an overlayer with the other color. And later I will show you how. But in this way, you will have a basement, a really uh, solid base of your skin tone, and you work layering over the skin tone. In this way, you don't put a new color, but you just change the color on the, um, on the first layering. In this way, the shadow, the, the, um, the shading will be more soft and more close to the reality and less plastic. Another benefit of concentrating yourself in only six tones is, uh, you know, doing realistic stuff is not easy. And you work for hours in small pieces, you know. And you know, it's uh, just behind the corner, you can, you can have some problem if you are not really uh, able or if you are just making practice about it. And uh, especially at the beginning, can happen that the customer go come back and, and you know, uh, look at here, maybe just a little piece is gone, uh, of maybe around the nose, maybe around the lips. And in this way, it's not, it's not hard to find exactly the same tone, you know, exactly the same tone you use. And in this way, everything goes easier because if you try to touch up with the wrong color, when he gets healed, of course, it will be different. In this way, this is another benefit of this because you have only six tones about, about, about what you are doing, you know, and in this, in this case, it's really easy. I'm really proud of it because uh, it's exactly what I use. Uh, also, before do this set uh, for Intense, uh, I, wo uh, I was premixed using Intense, of course, but I was premixed the same colors, you know. And when uh, I had the opportunity to talk with the, with the owner of the Intense and talk about this idea, for me it was a uh, honor, of course, but more because it's exactly what I use. More because I know this kind of, uh, this only six tones can help everybody to find a way to do, in order to do a, a good skin tone. That's why I'm really proud of it, not only for my name on the bottle. This is the, the foundation skin. I named this Pelle, in Italian means skin. Okay, and this was easy to find a name, you know, this was exactly what I was looking for, for the foundation. Okay, just two words more about this uh, pelle. Um, should be easier. The right way maybe would be not mix this with white in the beginning. Uh, when I paint, uh, I don't I don't have any pelle foundation, but I start from dark color and I mix it with white. But on the ink for tattooing, it's easier to find the foundation already mixed, pre-mixed with white. You know, in order to have exactly a foundation clear and um, easy to use because it's easy to go from light to dark it's not easy to go from dark to light in this case that's why I prepared this kind of foundation uh, the other one the one of the other is uh, Tufo this is an, a sort of ochre yellow okay I named this uh, Tufo because there's a, a special stone we have in Italy, in South Italy, is exactly the same color. And uh, this is very important for a skin tone because these kind of um, colors make skin tones uh, bright and more real, not like uh, dead skin. This and magenta is really important for give life to your skin tone.
I'm used to. Uh, I prefer you, um, use ochre yellow, this kind of ochre yellow named Tufo, because uh, instead using normal yellow, because this is not so bright. It's bright, but not uh, in um, not too bright. Because if I mix, uh, if I would like to mix a normal yellow or something like um, golden yellow or lemon yellow, something like that, the risk is uh, to have. Um, a not uh, close to reality skin tone. With this, uh, you can have a little more uh, opaque, and that is more close to the reality. The other one is matone. Matone is, um, I use this and this in order to use orange and yellow, okay? Because this has the same characteristic of uh, the base characteristic of yellow and uh, orange. But as I told you, it's not so bright. They are a little bit opaque, okay? And as I told you before, again, uh, some people has a skin, then some people's skin goes through yellow and then I mix a little more uh, tufo. Some other goes a little more into orange and so I prefer to mix some of this. The other really important color is magenta. Magenta is, of course, the primary colors and uh, is one of the basement of the, of the skin color. And also with this, uh, you can add a little more of this when you go, for example, through the, the nose or here, because you give more, um, you, you, the, the colors you are creating with a little bit more of this is more uh, warm. Okay, looks like uh, blood around, you know, because but you don't have to see it too much. It will be just uh, a little different between around the nose uh, or around here compared, for example, to here. Here is less magenta. In this part here is more magenta. So if you see your skin tone a little bit too uh, cold, you have to put a little bit, just a drop or just two drops of magenta in the same medium you create. The other one is uh, Terra di Siena. Is the name, is, this name is uh, really common in the, on painting and it's exactly the same color. And this is really useful for um, to make your, your skin tone base, your, uh, your mid-tone a little more uh, powerful, a little more dark. Okay, mix it with this, uh, of course, also with the other, give a little more um, power and uh, make your color more consistent. The other one is Ombra. This one is, um, is, a, is a, like a pelle but really dark, you know. In, in this case here, I put into this a little bit of blue. Why this? Because as you can see, here mostly are into red, into orange. And if you don't use a brown, a special brown with a little blue inside, you will not have a bright result. Because uh, as you know, probably, orange is the opposite in the color wheels of uh, blue, it's the opposite of blue. It's a complementary colors. And so if you put a little blue into this brown, when you put this close to the skin tone and every skin tone goes into a little bit to orange, your skin tone looks a little more bright. And so you will have, again, not a death part of your skin tone, but also in the shadow will be bright. And I could, the name is Ombra because in Italian means, in, in, in English you can say shadow. It's the same, same word. The translation is Ombra. For example, if you have to do big pieces, and you have to, uh, to create, to do, you cannot do in just one session, of course, and you have to create the same colors many times. In this way, again, it's easier to find again the, the, the right mid-tone and the right shading and everything. And this make you, uh, allowed you to be consistent in, um, in your work. And uh, every session you will use the same tone without becoming crazy looking in the middle of your, <laughs> your big wall with a lot of colors, you know? I will start preparing the, the skin tone. 
In this case, we have a, a lot of white and a lot of contrast with the, with the red part. And I, I will start with prepare the, the mid tone. It's almost white, but it's not really white. It's going into the, our palette tone and a little bit in yellow. And I start from white in this case. So I prepare more than one cap as a mid tone in order to have enough mid-tone for all the tattoos. And so I put two caps of pure white because I will contaminate one first and then the other and I, I want to have every time one clean. Okay, these three are made for, are prepared for the mid-tone. So now I take Pelle, as I told you is the the basement, the foundation for our skin. It looks pink, but it's not, not pink. There's a little blue into it. Of course, I have to, to be careful and try to do exactly the same. Then uh, I can see a little yellow in the, in the mid-tone, in the reference. So I would put, as I told you before, I don't put directly normal yellow, I prefer to put uh, too far on it, a little less saturate with yellow. There is none, there is none in the, on the skin tone, there is none matone, there is not orange. There is just a little bit uh, around, so I prefer a, a cap with this, just for overlaying on my mid tone. Magenta is really important in this case, because around the eyes, uh, Around the nose, there is a lot of magenta. In this case, the our, if you see, I'm li like you are seeing right now. I'm in, the, in my mid tone. I'm not putting all my set, but I will use all my set uh, for overlaying. Sometimes it's not needed. It's not, it's not needed all the colors into the into the mid tone, but it's needed all the colors in all the picture. Now I try to mix a bit. Okay, the middle is okay, just a little, little bit too dark. So I will do, I will put a little bit more white. This way now I have three caps with the mid-tone. Probably you, you will not see this color on the picture because in some parts it will be more into white, in some other more into magenta, in some other part more into yellow. But this is like a, a basement for all all the portraits and you 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 must be good enough to recognize this color in the picture as a basement okay, in this case i will start from the from the background and just to prepare the shape of the face so i start from this side here to tattoo all this part in order to have this part perfectly out, you know. This is a real boring, boring part of the tattoo, but it's really necessary, you know. Today I'm doing uh, this amazing piece of art of uh, Michael Ussar, my one of my favorite painters. And of course I asked him if I can reproduce some of his piece of art, you know, because I suggest to everybody every, every time you, you want to do to reproduce some some picture from other artists, it's better ask the permission in order to don't use without it, you know, it's not nice and I love this piece because uh, it's a really deep, uh, really powerful piece, you know, really expressive eyes and 
I love this piece. If you do the, the skin tone before, you can take the risk that this black can uh, contaminate uh, because the pores of the skin is open, you know, and if you do first the, the skin tone, it's easy to contaminate it with this black, this power black here. In this case here, I like to take care about this unfocused area. It's really important to, to give the right depth on, the, on all the image. This is a three liner. Just uh, I, I don't really do line. I I just make some sketch, just so really fast. I, want to, I just want to put the, all the information I need on the skin. You know, I will go later to do it better and. Uh, Because it's not necessary now concentrate on details. I just put all the information about the, the, the picture and then I will concentrate step by step everywhere, you know. But now I just want to put the right in the right place, uh, for example, the, the, the nose, the eye, and everything. And now I'm using a washing magenta, washing magenta. Because magenta in this picture is uh, everywhere, and so I can use it. And this part here is a really important zone, do line, but just really fast, you know, because if you do, if you do line you will never cover it, you know. It's really hard to cover a line with a solid color. You will always see the line. In this way, you just scratch really fast. I'm using a three-liner in doing this because it's a really fast needle, you know. You can, you can move your hand really fast because there is not much... Um, if you have more needles, the skin goes down before and this way the needle goes really fast into the skin. Now I start making the the darker area just to make a little better the, the shape of the eye. Also now I'm not I'm not doing too much lining you know I just I just do shading in order to do everything more soft. Because if you do line this part here, the risk is to have too, too shaped, you know, instead of having a really soft edge. To do this, I'm using a 7 mag. And I use magenta with brown. I don't, I don't want to have the, the, the maximum saturation right now. I, I just want to build the drawing, the, the, the tattoo. I just want to build it uh, step by step. Because if I saturate, if I completely saturate the first layering, uh, I cannot come back again with, uh, with other colors. But in this style, this, the most important thing is to to layer a few times in order to have really, really soft shading. For example, if you need green, I don't put directly green, I put ochre and blue. This is the concept. This kind of tattoo is <coughs> made step by step. You don't need to rush to see the, the finish step. You know where you start, you have to know where you have to go, and you cannot jump from one step to the other. You just take your time. Now I'm using a 15 mag. It's more soft than 7 mag of course.
as you can see I cannot saturate it just pass really fast it's like spraying in the skin you know it's not This style is a little slower, but the result, in my opinion, is more, is quite more soft and quite more uh, realistic. Now I'm just setting the volume of the of the face. Brown and magenta I'm using, and I want to. To put on the skin all the volumes there is in the picture and then I will think about uh, make more solid color and everything you cannot break the skin at this stage because if you do it you have not other opportunity to put other layer you know that's why you you have to do you must do you must work really soft I used to work uh, mid zone to dark uh, to light, but in this case, around the eyes are really dark color compared to the, the white uh, color in the light. Every time I do a tattoo, I don't I'm not do anything in like mechanical every day, every time the same kind of work. Every picture suggests me uh, a, a solution, suggests me uh, a strategy to, to work more comfortable. Now I start with my mid-tone and I mix it with a little bit of sienna and magenta and I start make uh, the shape of the chick. Again, here I don't want to saturate directly. Now I mix my mid tone base with a little bit of magenta, a little bit of matone. Again, it's better to not start with dark because I don't want to put directly the darker color. I want to put before the, a mid tone in order to make uh, later the darker under the mid-tone. In this way you change the mid-tone, you are not putting dark color directly in the skin, but you are changing the color you already put on the skin. Again, mid-tone, sienna, magenta, a little orange, mattone. As you can see, if you combine the right way this color, you can have every kind of tone, you know, every, every tone you need. For example, here I need more into red, so I put more magenta and my mid-tone. Here is a little bit more into orange, and so I go into matone. And I go straight with this. Here is a little bit more into orange, and so I go into matone. And I go straight with this. This area here is just to be under the shadow, and so start with magenta. This is brown magenta, and a little bit of mid tone. This is too light. I just push it a bit here, and the green. Again, green. I'm using green right now because. It's almost red, the nose, and as I told you before uh, about the, the blue shadow, the brown, blue, now I'm using green because I have more red and less orange. Green is uh, the opposite on the color wheels of the red, to so don't damage the skin. Because it's really easy because you work for hours and hours in a really small piece and so 
the risk is uh, behind the corner. Here are two different volumes in this nose. In this picture here, it's really emphasized the difference between the area around the eyes, really red. But also in the normal portrait, if you train yourself to, to find out that the real color, you will see more red in the, the top of the nose, more red around the eyes. It's a good, good um, practice to watch a lot of pictures, even if you don't need to, to tattoo, just, just to train yourself and watch a lot of uh, pictures and try to understand where is the, this small difference of colors. As I told you, this picture is really emphasized this fact here. You know, the, 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 the nose is really red. Now, magenta, a little white and red. Don't be afraid to do the darker area really dark because there is no light if you don't put the really dark shadow. The two things are really connected. And the darker you put the area and the darker area, the lighter will be appear the light area. I do this part here with the brown magenta. I put uh, ombra half and half with magenta. And this way I have a really warm brown. And it's perfect in this situation here. I suggest to follow the most that you can, the, the colors of course of the reference, especially when you do some uh, some painting from other artists, you know, it's not nice to change your, the colors you decide. So the more you can follow the reference, the nicer we become. Now I mix magenta and green in order to have this, to make the green a little more dark. I go into magenta, orange and a little bit of my mid-tone. It's not really a mid-tone, this is a little light, but it works well. Again the same tip, magenta, orange, white, a bit of this. And you have this kind of violet, exactly as the reference. I want it a little lighter, so I go into the white directly. You know, you have to know the, the, the color that you have on your, on your needle, on your tube. Now I, want, I need this, but a little lighter. I go directly into the white and maybe into this or mid-tone. And so I got the same color, but a little lighter. Let's take a liner. Okay, with the liner now I'm going to do some details here. I don't use black here, I use uh, brown. I put uh, ombra and magenta in this, half and half. It's really dark, but it's not black. If I put black here, I get the same value of this. And it's not correct, you know. You always have to, care, to take care about the, the value of your colors. Also here, it's really important to give the volume, you know, because every part of the, 
of the face. Uh, when you do realism, the most important thing is take a look at the volume. Now I'm starting to put the darker area in this part here. And as I told you before, is uh, I'm I'm just changing the color of the the of the uh, the ink I put before. You know, it's uh, it's not new color. It looks like new colors, but uh, it's overlaying. It's overlaying. I overlayer on under the the color I put it before. I, I do that because if I start from the darker area and I go from dark to light. The result, in my opinion, it will be too plastic. But and in this way, uh, everything is more soft, you know. And uh, and I prefer this way. It's like an oil painting, you know. When when you when you I don't know if anybody uses the oil. There's many 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 different techniques in paint with oil, but one of these is uh, working by layering, you know, waiting that the canvas will be dry. And this is almost the same, you know, you just put your color, your new color, under the other color. So now I have wash, wash the ink. Remember, in, you can wash the color only if you put a solid base. Because in order to have a, a long-lasting tattoo, you cannot do the first layering with the washed color. So first it's better to put a, a solid color and then the overlay you, know, you can wash just a bit into the water. So when you need, when you have a normal red and you want it more strong, more deep red, just put a little bit of magenta into it. If you want the red more bright, just put a little bit of yellow. I don't care if I go also in the lightest area because later I will go with light to dark and I will cover this part. It's not solid right now, it's just shading. I do some wrinkles here. Uh, I worked a lot in the north so I want to change my machine. Because uh, until now I used the 0.35 needle and now I'm gonna use a 0.30, it's more soft on the skin. At this stage when I want to overlayering and overlayering again, it's better to use softest needle. So I slow down the, the speed and I slow down the, the power when I do this. Right. I think the eye will be the same. I use this kind of pink as a, as a mid-tone. And then I will go over it with uh, magenta so this is just uh, the base I go with magenta and I do just some shading and I give the roundness of the edge I start making the lightest area and I go also over the darkest area I do I did before with no problem. I just uh, complete my saturation of the skin. Uh, as I told you before, I, I don't saturate the skin at the first layering. If I do this, uh, you are fucked. You cannot go over with other uh, overlaying. So uh, it's like. Uh, it's like if you have a, a, a spray bottle and you spray on a piece of paper. If you go in this way and you spray, you broke the paper. But if you go, if you make an open movement, a big circle, you cover all the area without damage the paper. 
and exactly the same is on the skin, you know. The skin is really elastic, is really, but it's also really easy to damage it. But in this way, you just, it's, like, it's just like spraying ink. It's not the last layering, you know. I just put my mints on there, but later I will go on, I will go over with, uh, with white. That's why I told you before the midtone is really important because uh, using the midtone you can go darker but you can also go lighter, you know, and uh, in, in this way you have a lot of opportunity to, to change the color, but not only change and also to put different color and create different color directly on the skin. That's why now I'm putting this, uh, this midtone I prepared at the beginning, it's like it's this part here. But later we go over this with uh, with white, and then we mix white with this mid tone, and I will create another kind of tone directly here. For example, here in this part here, a little bit of more yellow is needed, you know, and so I, I just go into tufo, I push into the water, and then I go with a little yellow. But again, in this way, it's not like put directly yellow, directly tufo. I'm, I'm just changing the color of the mid tone. This is the main concept. If, if you compare now the, the tattoo with the, the, the reference, it's darker here than, than it's in the picture. But I don't care about that because I know that it's not completely saturated and I have to go back with, uh, with white. And the white will cover when there is not color and will, will, the, will cover the, this part here. And then when I will do the highlights will be more bright. Now I'm putting the white. Remember using the skin tone sometimes is hard because yeah, the blood comes a little out and change a bit the, the tone of your colors, you know. Don't care about this, just wait a bit and let relax a little bit the skin and then you can go on. When I, when I start using skin tone colors, I, a few years ago, I was afraid, you know, because the, when the blood come out, completely change the tone that you are putting on the skin and if you don't know what's happened, you think, okay, I, I, I put, did I put the right color or not? Uh, just wait a bit and, uh, and you will see the right tone you put on the skin. Now this stage is really, um, is the funny part of the tattoo, you know, because in, in this part here, you really feel that the tattoo is really becoming nice, you know, because uh, with the, the lightest area, uh, the volume is closed. It's not finished, but starts closed, you know, and uh, this is the most, uh, the, the nicer part of the tattoo, the most funny part. And it's easier this part here compared to the other. But as I told you before, if, if you don't do the first layer in the right way, in this part here you can destroy the skin. So be careful in the, in the first layering less than one millimeter, really, really soft. I just, I just touch the skin. I don't push at all. You can see now I put the, the lightest area. It's not the, the, the last. But now I can go over with, for example, some magenta and uh, my mint tone. I have this kind of pink or purple. In this moment, you can do better the volume you just uh, you just scratch in the skin before you know now i can i can give more value here and volume it's easier because i put all the information before and now i'm just doing it better and uh, exactly uh, when you do paint uh, for or airbrush also you know i you, you just do layer by layer and you do the um, 
you do more volume every layer there is more volume every layer there is more details but every information you you, did, you you already put in the first in the first pass now we are just making it better as i told you there is many many different kind of painting of course uh, what i'm talking about is uh, over layer painting you know <laughs> Okay, now I want to wait just to let relax this part of the skin and I go with white over here, it's almost white. Okay, before using it I want to, to fix this shadow here. kind of brown and orange so I put my mm, matone I, pu I push matone I, I got matone and uh, brown ombra and it's perfect and I go directly to overlayer the part I did before again matone and ombra in this kind of work, you have to be patient. You you don't. Uh, the big mistake is uh, to if you want to see directly the the works finish. You know, I want to see the eye finish. I want to see the nose finish. But this is a mistake. You know, you have to wait and go down uh, slow and slow and uh, create and construct it step by step, really slowly. You have to know where you have to go and you have to know every step you have to do in order to do a, a really good work. Only in, in this way you can have, you can do something really, really different, something smooth, something really uh, delicate. It's clear when you, when you, I suggest to do this kind of pieces in more than one se session because uh, in the second session you can spend other five hours if you want and put new details, uh, more saturation, more, uh, uh, more uh, realistic effects. But of course you need to have the same colors. If you don't have exactly the same colors, the same mixing uh, of the same tones, you can destroy all your work, you know? And so that's why, again, it's... it's it's easy to concentrate yourself in just six uh, six tones. Over here, you know, step by step, I'm going closer the exactly the colors of the reference. I want just to do it a little bit more uh, powerful because you know, the skin is not uh, canvas, and this need to be forever strong so in order to do this uh, in order to achieve this i want to to put a little bit more uh, powerful color a little more um, uh, solid and more bright just a little bit be careful I, I do the same also when i do normal portrait but in this case uh, in, in that case when you do normal portrait for example portrait of uh, families or something like that it's very important to don't change the atmosphere of the of the tattoo compared to the to the uh, to the reference because you can you can pump up a little bit the colors but be careful don't don't do it too much because if you do it too much you the risk is to to make too puppy too not so real you know and change the atmosphere of the photos of the kind of the reference. Okay, I'm almost finished with this uh, part here. And you see, I can switch, I can do lightest, uh, darker, lightest. There is no problem. I, I like to switch from light to, to dark color. There is no problem. The, the, you have to remember that you cannot um, saturate the skin 
because the, 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 the maximum saturation must be done just in the last layering. The last layering will be the ones you will have the, 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 the maximum saturation. This is a seven liner. Okay, now I go with a three liner. Yeah, because now I need uh, just a really, really fine line over here, just to <coughs> close the shape of the eye. I don't do exactly a, a perfect line because it's not, it should be not realistic, but just just a, a shading, a shading, really soft, but made with this needle. Looks like a line, but it's not so strong line. I do the same here. And also in the upstairs. Now I take the a clean needle and I'm going to do the eyes. Why clean needle? Uh, because I don't like to <laughs> wash the needle. In, in this way, uh, directly you can go directly with the color you need. I will use a clean needle also for a white, for a pure white. Okay, this eye is here. This eye here is a little more into grey and yellow. And I just put this little tufo and again blue. I get this. It's almost the same. You know, these small things make the difference, you know, you, if you can be really, if you pay attention of these details, this little, for example here, there is a little green. This makes the difference, you know, like when you take care of every detail, every, every little different color. In the end, all these small things, small difference, put it together, make a real, a, a really good tattoo compared with medium tattoo. Okay. Now it looks a little bit more into pink compared to this, but I have to put the, the pure white. And I will do it right now. Let me check a bit. I want to make a little more roundness, roundness in the eye to make it more real. And so I will use a new needle, 7 mag. I don't want to waste time in uh, washing needles, you know. In this way you can you can use uh, many different needles. Okay, just a little bit of tufo and a little bit of our minton we prepare at the beginning of the story. I, I, I don't push at all. I just I just make some scratch. Remember the eye is a ball and you must recreate the volume of the ball. Again a little too, a little bit of tufo. Go into with yellow. Now I go with the 
without washing, I I could I had to find my tip in my needle. Without washing, uh, I push uh, into the the mid tone. So I a little lighter. I leave this part in the middle without color because I want to put uh, really really uh, clean white. Yeah, I'm using the other kind of mag, it's a uh, zero, 0 30 instead of using 0 35, but just for a, for a second. Okay, now I can see a little bit of blue there, I will put it a little lighter, also here. But I prefer to wash a bit. When I do this kind of overlayering with a totally different color, I prefer to wash every time the, the needles. With a, I put blue, I just push in the water, and then you go. I want to fix a little bit better this part here to close a bit more. As a last thing, I do the, the Snow White opaque. Uh, it's, you know, it's a really solid white and clean. I, I want that really clean. And so I do it for last things. Because otherwise, in the other case, every kind of color, there is no problem if it looks a little dirty. Maybe it's all, also better, you know? but. When you use white and you have to have this kind of white here, you cannot take a risk to, to contam contaminate it. Now we are at the, the, maybe the, the, last, the last layering. And, but every step, step by step, I am a little bit uh, softer. I have to be softer and softer. In this way, I, I reduce the, the risk of uh, damaging the skin. For example, now I cannot no more use the lining, the, the lining needles here, because for sure if I do some details here with the lining, for sure I will destroy the skin. Now I'm working softer with the with my hand, but also it's a little slower the machine. In this part here, I, will, I, I, will, I left clean this part here of the nose because I wanted to use the white in two ways. Now I just uh, shading with the white here and then I will go with solid, black, solid white with, um, with another kind of needle to have more bright light just in one spot. But we have to decide, decide first where is that spot and don't put any ink there. I always use a Snow White opaque to finish my work. It's, it's the, 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 last, um, the last power in the, in the tattoo. And remember that the, white, the whitest area, the white spot is really important. Don't, don't put white everywhere, just put exactly where the white is, because if you put white everywhere without thinking, the risk is to, to change the, the point of, of the light, and in the end you change the volume and you make everything wrong. In this moment I just finish uh, the, the everything, and then I will go into every part to see if there is some difference, if there is some touch-up to do. For example, this part here, I need to go into with the little tufo there, little mattoni also. But I will go with uh, washed ink 
There is no problem now to use washed ink because there is a solid ink on the on, on this tab. There is solid ink. You, you can go over with the with um, washed ink. Look at here, two for orange, and they go there. I think it's important because it makes sense to hold the red in the in the face. It's not needed too much, it's just just a little bit. Sorry. You know, there is a lot of red in the face, also because we have a, a red background. So if I put just a bit, it makes sense to have all this red on the face. It's not necessary too much, you know, just a bit, it's, a, it's enough. I'm now putting the white with this needle. And compare with the white I put uh, five minutes ago, looks more bright. Because first I did a, a sort of shading, you know. Looks white, but not so bright compared to this. It's, 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 a, it's a way to use the white, you know. Uh, if you have to, your um, your eyes read always white, but. It's two different kind of white, you know. One is uh, with the magnum and it really looks like soft. The other one is a uh, lining and looks really, really powerful. For example here, I can do like this and then you put this. Look, the white looks more bright. I do this and this. Also here, I can do a line really fast. So I got white, but not so bright. And if I put this, looks more uh, bright. Even here, I do first a shading, and then I put the, the spots. You know, you're, I'm using the same white, but in this in this way, it looks in some part looks more. It looks like it comes out. Yeah. Okay, guys, this is uh, the end of the tattoos after four hours. This is my way of uh, using my set of ink. I hope you enjoy using it. Thanks to Intense to, to give me the opportunity to, to produce this uh, ink set. And uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks everybody.